Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back at the technical forum at the group exhibit Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries. I invite you all to come and have a seat. There are drinks on the house, so please enjoy the next discussion. It will be a 20 minutes discussion, and we'll be discussing the PEM fuel cells. And our uh, topic in particular will be the unraveling the challenges of me metallic bipolar plates for PEM fuel cells. And for that, we'll hear a representative from the Forschungszentrum Jülich. So please welcome with me on stage, Mr. Weisbecker. So, hello everybody. Um, my name is Vitali Weisbecker. I'm a scientist at the research center in Jülich. And in the next couple of minutes, I would like to talk about uh, cost-efficient and metal-free coating for metallic bipolar plates. So it's a pretty exciting topic. Feel free, come closer. And um, in the team are also Andreas Schulze-Lohoff, and Klaus Wedlich, and we are working on this topic in the group of um, Professor Lenart in the IEK3. Uh, so, a few comments uh, to the presentation. I would like to answer the questions, why do we need metallic bipolar plates? Very shortly, the benefits and challenges, the most exciting part, the experimental results, and the roadmap in our project, um, which is running right now. Uh, so, uh, due to the possibility of uh, a very thin bipolar plate design uh, concerning metallic bipolar plates in the range of 0.1 millimeters, uh, we have the chance to increase the volumetric and gravimetric power density in comparison to graphitic or graphite-based bipolar plates um, that are in the range of two millimeters or even higher. Also, we have a innovative design for manufacturing, so by stamping or by hydroforming, which is also uh, much more uh, efficient and comfortable than milling or uh, injection molding of uh, graphitic plates. Um, but we have, of course, in a uh, low temperature PEM fuel cell um, operating temperature of 60 up to 80 degrees C. We have a um, relatively aggressive environment of uh, 0.1 molar sulfuric acid and eventually even um, some traces of um, HF. And also we have the uh, gas supply, hydrogen or air, um, or rather uh, oxygen. And that's why we need a fundamental understanding of the electrochemical corrosion at the interface metal electrolyte, and we need uh, the understanding about insulating passive layers on the metal surface, um, which I will explain here on this slide, um, pretty short. So, uh, the main point is uh, that we have an uh, acidic environment and uh, we have an uh, increased temperature and thus we have uh, on the anodic side uh, electrochemical corrosion with hydrogen. On the cathodic compartment we have also, uh, so we have uh, uh, oxygen and uh, a higher potential which lies in the range of 0.5 volts up to 1 volt. It depends on the operating conditions on the fuel cell. And this leads to the passivation, or better, to the formation of non-conductive or of less conductive um, passive layers on metal surface. Um, they consist mainly of oxides or hydroxides. And we get a rise of the interfacial contact resistance and uh, as a result, uh, decrease of performance and also we can get a poisoning of the membrane or the catalyst by released metal ions which are blocking the functional groups of the nephion membrane or the catalyst. So that's why the topic uh, efficient and protective coatings on metallic bipolar plates is um, very important. So here at a glance I would like to compare 
a very well-known stainless steel 316 versus graphite and we can get um, decrease of weight down uh, down to 80 percent and a uh, decrease of the volume by 50 percent um, you can here see on, on in this in this table um, the comparison between graphite graphite composites 316l titanium and aluminum but I would I don't like to talk about this materials because uh, here it's a little bit uh, too expensive. I would like to compare just uh, due to time reasons uh, graphite or graphite composite with 316L. So um, we have uh, material thickness of here in this range two millimeters. Here we can go down to 0 0.1 millimeters, and the mass which is needed uh, for fuel cell or for bipolar plate application. You can see here, so it's the mass per area. Um, it's much lower than here for the graphitic case. And when you consider the mass of two bipolar plates, um, you can see that here you need much less material, much less weight of, of the sample than for uh, graphitic bipolar plates. Uh, and I'm considering this calculation um, for a fuel cell with an electrical power density of 0 0.5 watts per square centimeter. So this means um, it's very promising to use uh, metallic materials. And uh, here maybe just a few words um, to the cost of, of, of the materials. Um, here in the upper part, you can see that metallic materials uh, make up 14% of a uh, fuel cell stack. Um, on the other side, for graphitic materials, uh, the bipolar plates uh, have a contribution of 30 to 40%. And uh, here in, in, in this lower part, in this side, um, it's a cost est estimation done by the DOE from the year 2014. Um, so the, the main goal is uh, to reduce the fuel cell, the stack costs down to around about uh, 12.5 thousand euros per 18, uh, 80 kilowatt stack. And here are 1,740 euros calculated only for bipolar plates, whereof are 210 euros for materials and here 300 euros for manufacturing and for the coating 1,240. Um, this is round about, so it's nearly 15 euros per kilowatt. So I think this is uh, a little bit more interesting. So you can see here the measured contact resistance uh, carried out between two GDLs. You can see it here, here is the sample, two GDLs and on both sides two contact elements and we can uh, achieve with our uh, coating uh, values between um, 35 down to 15 milliohms uh, square centimeter in the aerial pressure range of 100 to uh, 300 Newton per square centimeter. So it's a decrease uh, of one order of magnitude uh, compared with a uncoated stainless steel or nickel-based alloy 625. Also here, so we have done some measurements at uh, steady state uh, conditions in an uh, XZ23 electron, electrode cell. And here in this upper part, you can see the um, steady state polarization at zero volt which is the anodic compartment in a real fuel cell. Um, so when we have a look on the stainless steel, we can see uh, a breakdown of the passive layer um, here in this range, so um, after 30 minutes. And the current, the anodic current, is increasing up to 25 microamps per square centimeter. And our coating is um, uh, protected cathodically because we can see we can measure only uh, negative current. This means there are no 
corrosion nor anodic processes, um, which is pretty good. So this is what we would like to see. And in the other case, for the cathodic compartment at 0 0.6 volts, um, we have, in terms of the bare stainless steel, again, a um, corrosion current, so an anodic current. And for the, for the coating, we have a negative current. So again, here, the, the coating is uh, protected against corrosion. Um, and I think, so as, as already mentioned, uh, here you can see the anodic current where corrosion takes place. And here we have cathodic processes like hydrogen formation or oxygen reduction reaction and so on. And I think you are here to see this slide. So uh, we have tested our coating. It's the, the blue curve against um, bare material and golden plates. And the cell is running right now. So uh, since the project is, is uh, uh, in a pretty early stage, uh, the performance um, here is recorded after 420 hours. And it seems to be pretty good. We are at least in the range of gold, uh, whereas the bare metallic plates are already decreasing slightly. And um, this was... Um, very interesting to see for us. So it, it doesn't make sense, and the coating is wor uh, the coating uh, works, and we are able to to assemble uh, single cells with a thickness of 2.1 millimeters, and compared to graphitic plates, uh, which we assume with 2.5 millimeters, we can reduce the cell thickness um, by 60 percent. So the the cell with graphitic plates have a, has a thickness of 5.3 millimeters. How does the coating behave on, on the surface? So here we can see a very thin coating. It's highly flexible and it's uh, transparent in, in, this, uh, in this stage. And we can see that, that it's just, I think, on, on the next slide, it's, okay, here's the thickness. And here on this slide, it's, um, it's visible. Even when we have some, some cracks or holes on, or defects on the metallic surface, like here or, or in this range, the coating is just laying over the, over the cracks, over the, the, the holes, and is, is protecting the surface. And there are no, no, um, no, no, no delamination or no cracks and, and so on. I think it's... Pointer doesn't work. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one back, please. <laughs> yeah. Here, here is a particle on the metallic surface, and you can see that the um, the coating is lying over the particle like a tissue. And and here are some foldings, and there there is no crack formation, and and it doesn't break. Okay. Next slide, please. Okay. So um, we have in our project. Um, the expertise in, in fuel cell technology, in electrochemistry, and in material science. So we produce or we synthesize the material uh, by ourselves. And the process is also done in our institute. And uh, we have a scalable technology free of um, metals, free or of uh, toxic materials. And we can test X C2 in three electrode cells. We have analysis, and we can perform uh, single cells. W one back, please. And um, on the other side, um, we need partners uh, who can provide metallic bipolar plates, uh, who uh, have knowledge in manufacturing tooling of uh, bipolar plates, and we would like to assemble stacks in a cooperation with, with companies who are doing um, stacks for field tests under realistic conditions. And on the last slide, um, you can see our contacts. So uh, feel free to contact me or my colleagues. And again, here the, pro uh, the project is running in, in the department of Professor Leonard in the Institute IK3. 
under the supervision of Professor Stolten. And I would like to, to thank the German and the European government for supporting us. And uh, thank you all for your attention. And feel free to ask when there are questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Weisbecker. Are there any questions from the audience at this time? Okay, so you can take all your questions to the booth and go more into detail. Yes, please. And, um, <laughs> and I think someone is really eager to discuss the details. And for that, you can go to the uh, booth of the Forschungszentrum Jülich, and that is located at E69. Yes. Once again, thank you very much for this interesting presentation. Big hands, please, for Mr. Weisbecker. Our next speaker will be a person that has been seen here at the fair for several years now, is very famous now, a very charming person, that is Dr. Eva Rau Nielsen, and that will be in two minutes time and then we'll discuss the Enefield project. <laughs>